Hi everyone, welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today we're going to be taking an up-close look at this new motherboard from Gigabyte. This is the Z68X UD3P B3 motherboard from Gigabyte. It features the new Z68 chipset and it has a ton of features to go over. So let's get started. So here's a closer look at the box itself. Let's go over some of the logos which are indicating some of the features. We'll go with the big ones first. Touch BIOS. This is a hybrid EFI technology BIOS, uh, which is EFI, which means you can actually use your mouse in there to click on things, which is a great leap forward in BIOS technology. Of course, we should now all be saying EFI, but BIOS is probably going to stick around because that's what people are used to talking about. Over here, we have a three-year warranty for this product in the United States and Canada. Uh, Gigabyte is known for their ultra-durable PCBs that use twice the amount of copper uh, that they use in standard PCBs, which uh, improves performance and has greater durability, of course. Uh, now we have a bunch of logos over here, so I'll point out some ones that are interesting. Uh, NVIDIA SLI ready, so you can have two-card SLI set up. Also, ATI Crossfire X capable. They separated the logos so they don't get in a fight. 12-phase power design uh, for overclocking your CPU. We'll get into that once we take a closer look at the board. Uh, they have USB ports on the back of this motherboard that supply three times the amount of USB power uh, as compared to normal, which will enhance your USB device's ability to charge and that sort of thing. I imagine also powering uh, things like external hard drives could work a little bit better with that. Uh, USB 3.0 support as well as SATA revision 3, 6 gigabit per second support. Also, they use 50,000 hour Japanese caps. Uh, they use low RDS on MOSFETs. Uh, they use all ferrite core chokes. Again, that's for the VRM area supplying power to the CPU, uh, which mainly assists with overclocking. Uh, down here we can see one of the features of the Z68 chipset, which is uh, Intel Smart Response Technology, also known as SSD caching. We'll get back to that. It's a really cool feature. Again, support for Intel Generation 2 core processors, Core i3, i5, and i7s, the 1155 socket, uh, Z68 chipset, of course. Uh, here is something talking about the Blu-ray support for the sound card, Dolby Home Theater support. Uh, again, a benefit of the EFI BIOS is you can boot from hard drives that are three terabytes in size. And that about does it for the back of the box, or the front of the box. On the back, we can see uh, lots of the same stuff, but I don't want to go over all that again. So let's just go ahead and unbox it and see what all comes with it. All right, first of all, we have a... Warning here, do not try to install a socket 1156 CPU into this motherboard, please. Only 1155 CPUs are compatible. Please do not make that mistake. It would be very sad. Uh, here is your driver disk. It's always best to download the latest ones from the website. But when you get a brand new motherboard like this, you might find that actually the ones on the website are also on the driver disk. Here's a Dolby Home Theater sticker you can use. Here are a couple installation manuals. This one is black and white and is multilingual. And this one here is uh, also black and white, but this one uh, is a bit more full featured. That's your English manual, and that has all the good stuff you need to know, such as uh, plugging in your motherboard front panel connectors, ins installing your CPU correctly, uh, making sure you've got your memory plugged into the right DIMM slots. So keep that on hand while you're doing your build. Uh, other accessories include our input-output shield for the back of your case. They have nicely labeled uh, with, and color-coded your inputs and outputs, especially these USB, uh, these super-power USB ports that they have that supply three times the power. They're all uh, highlighted in red there, so you can make sure if you're charging something, you plug it into one of those ports. Here we have a dual two-way SLI bridge if you're gonna be running SLI. And then we also have four serial ATA cables, uh, two of which have L brackets on one end. So there is a look at the full motherboard itself, and uh, I really like the design choices that Gigabyte has gone with. It's a black PCB uh, with some gray highlights. It's a very subdued look overall, but it does look very, very, I'm going to say dangerous. I don't know. <laughs> it's, that's up to your personal preference. But you got some nice gunmetal gray heat sinks. Uh, these look like they're anodized, perhaps. Um, but for the Z68 chipset there, as well as for your VRM area for the CPU up there, very nice look. Uh, you pretty much got black on black for all of your DIMM slots as well as your PCI slots. And then down in here, just a little bit of white and gray highlighting with your serial ATA ports. Um, so very nice design overall. Uh, it does look pretty mean, but uh, let's get start off down here and we'll go over the different features and plugs on the motherboard as they are arranged. So starting down here in the bottom right, well, we have a system fan header that is a four pin header. 
So it looks like you can have uh, some system fans with PWM control. Uh, right here is your front panel connectors. They are color coded inside that little socket so you can help line up all your front panel connectors from your computer case. Next to that is a TPM module header and most people don't use that. Next to that is a USB 3.0 front panel header so you can route that to a front panel USB 3 points on your computer case. Uh, next to that we have a few USB, USB 2.0 front panel connectors. It looks like we have one, two, three of those lined up right next to each other. Next to that we have a comm header, a firewire header, uh, and then finally over here is our front panel audio, HD audio connector. That's pretty much most of your front panel uh, connections right there, all right there at the bottom of the board. Uh, so let's just move up to our serial ATA ports here. We have eight total. The four black ones here are Serial ATA Revision 2, uh, which is 3 gigabits per second. Uh, these two here are Serial ATA Revision 3, 6 gigabit per second. The white ones are controlled by the Z68 chipset. The gray ones here are controlled by a Marvell 88SE9172 chip. So nice to have four uh, total USB, I'm sorry, <laughs> Serial ATA Revision 3 ports uh, for all of your fancy new hard drives and SSDs and everything else you want to plug into those. Uh, next up, of course, we have the Z68 chipset, very low profile, passively cooled heatsink. Great to have passively cooled heatsinks, and I'm glad to see that now that we're finally seeing Z68 that it can be passively cooled uh, because chipset fans tend to make a decent amount of noise. Uh, moving right along, we do have two 16-speed PCI Express slots. Uh, this is SLI and Crossfire compatible. Crossfire compatible. If you are using both of these slots, then one will default to 8-speed. Uh, above and in between those are some single-speed uh, PCI Express ports, three of those. And finally, down here at the bottom, you have some legacy standard PCI ports for your legacy devices. Sound card area where you can see all the, uh, the caps and the chip for the uh, integrated sound card. Again, that features 108 decibel signal-to-noise ratio, full-rate lossless audio for uh, Blu-ray and DVD audio playback. And uh, that's it pretty much for the bottom half of the board. Let's move up to the top half, starting with our 24-pin front panel, I'm sorry, 24-pin motherboard power connector uh, right there. Right above there, we have a, another 3-pin uh, uh, case fan header. Next to that, we have our DIMM slots. Uh, this has four DDR3 1.5 volt DIMM slots. It supports up to 32 gigabytes of memory and uh, supports DDR3 overclocked memory modules up to 2133 megahertz. Uh, next to that is our socket 1155 socket. I still can't figure out how to say socket twice. Uh, it's got a protective cap over that. Make sure you always keep that on hand, especially if you ever need to return the motherboard because they won't accept it back unless you uh, have that cap on there. Next to that is our VRM area. Again, this has 12 phase power supplied to the CPU and they have a couple uh, again nice gray anodized heat sinks right above that. Uh, finally over here for supplemental motherboard power we have our 8 pin uh, ATX or EPS power connector. Definitely want to go with the 8 pin power there because I'm assuming if you go, have a Z68 motherboard you're probably going to dabble with overclocking a little bit. This is a bit more of an enthusiast platform uh, so make sure you have a good power supply that can uh, that supports that uh, EPS power connector. Above that we have one more system fan uh, header, that's a three pin. Uh, I did briefly go over the CPU area but forgot to mention there's a CPU fan header right there, right at the top. And finally we have our back panel connectors. Uh, we have quite a few of these red USB slots. So those are USB 2.0 but they are super power USB 2.0 slots that provide uh, three times the amount of USB power to the standard, uh, which is the gigabyte is supplying so you can charge your devices more quickly. Uh, below that we have a standard PS2 port for mouse or keyboard. Next to that is a Toslink optical audio out uh, that is SPDIF compatible. Right here on top of these USB 2.0 ports we have a single Firewire plug. We do have a couple uh, USB 3.0 headers in the back, the blue ones right here. So you do have four total USB 3.0 ports available, two here and two more available via the front panel connector. Finally right here we have our uh, network interface card. This is a gigabit uh, connector and it uh, operates off of a Realtek RTL8111E chip. Again gigabit Ethernet. And finally next to that you have your rear panel audio outputs, inputs and outputs I should say, supporting uh, 7.1 surround sound.
All right, guys, before we go, I did want to mention a couple of the new features of the Z68 chipset that uh, are touted on the box here for the, this new Gigabyte motherboard. First off is what's called Intel Smart Response Technology. And essentially what that does is it allows you to take a mechanical hard drive like this one and an SSD like this one here and mate them together. Uh, what it does is it takes frequently accessed data on the mechanical hard drive, it caches it to the SSD, and by using those in tandem, you can get much, much faster response, particularly for uh, files and data that you access frequently on the SSD. So a nice feature there. I'm sure there's a lot more documentation that will be forthcoming uh, as these Z68 boards become more popular. Um, but the other thing that is mentioned is called QuickSync. QuickSync basically allows you to encode video much, much faster. So if you do a lot of, say, taking videos that are stored on your computer and uh, bringing them onto a portable device like a uh, cell phone or a media player, QuickSync will allow you to take that video, transcode it much, much more quickly, and uh, basically saves you time when you're syncing your portable devices with your desktop computer. And before we close, here's one last look at that nice matte black finish on the PCB. Uh, this is the back of the board. Right here we can see our Z68 chipset is mounted with a couple spring-loaded Phillips head screws. And then right up here at the top, our uh, heat sinks for the VRMs are uh, mounted with push pins. And that pretty much wraps it up. This has been our unboxing and overview of the Gigabyte Z68X UD3P-B3 motherboard uh, supporting the LGA 1155 socket Intel Generation 2 Core i3, i5, and i7 processors. My name is Paul with Newegg TV. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.